Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcast, in particular The Amazing World of Radio, over at amazing.greatdetectives.net. Every Wednesday, I'm bringing you an episode of a summer replacement radio program. That was what uh, Patreon supporters chose. Tomorrow, uh, as a bonus episode, we will bring you an episode of that series, something that comes close to the Great Detectives. But we played a lot of interesting programs so far, including a program that would become the basis for Green Acres, as well as some great music and drama programs, and there's even more to come. So check that out over at amazing.greatdetectives.net, and you can find out about all of our podcasts over at greatdetectives.net. You can check out any of the podcasts that we do. Now let's go ahead and get into today's episode of The Fat Man. The original air date is July the 28th, 1955, and the title is Murder Made Stylish. There he goes into that drugstore. He's stepping on the scales. Weight, 239 pounds. Fortune, date. Who is it? The Fat Man. It was one of those who warm for winter and not warm enough for spring nights. And I was sitting uncomfortably in my office doing a little homework on a set of fingerprints. A big dinner, a couple of bottles of beer, and my concentration had almost lulled me into a light sleep. I came to with a start, though, as I realized someone had quietly come into my office. When I looked up, I saw a big, tough-looking lug moving up to my desk. That man... How did you get in there? You ought to learn to shut your doors. You ought to learn to knock. I got a job for you, Runyon. What kind of a job? You'll find out later. I don't like blind dates. Not even when the payoff is guaranteed. Where's your partner? I don't need no partner here. Here? Yeah. What's that? Half a thousand dollar bill. Where's the other half? You get that when the job's finished. You don't look like you can afford to tear up coin of the realm this way. I got a car downstairs. You want me to take you where the other half is located? Just a second. What you looking for? Got tape. So I can paste the two halves together. <laughs> That's the joint. Second floor. It's a walk-up. Aren't you coming along? I wait for you down here. I might need you for an introduction. Look, fat man, there's nothing to worry about. All you gotta do is go up to the second floor and knock. And you still won't tell me what this is all about. I tell you I can't. I got my orders. You won't need that gun, Runyon. I'd just as soon keep it handy if it's all the same to you. The setup was phony. Maybe I was taking a chance. But chances pay off in my business. And it gave me a cozy feeling to get that close to a thousand dollar bill. There was a door facing the stairway on the second floor. I hesitated for a second, trying to figure out a way to keep from exposing myself when the door was open. 
Good evening. Oh, hello. I thought you were someone else. You want to see me? Oh, I want to see everybody. Everybody in the whole wide world. <laughs> Mind if I come in? <laughs> oh, not at all. Having a little party, huh? I'm having a wonderful time. You want a drink? No, thanks. Oh, come on. It's good for your liver. Uh, my liver's in fine shape as it is. What's your name, Paul? Wide and handsome? Runyon. Mine's April. Like in shower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to dance? No, thanks. Oh, come on. I like to dance. Tell us about a little Santa. <laughs> you ever see this before? Mm-hmm. What's that? Half of a thousand dollar bill. Oh, where's the other half? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, but it's silly to walk around with half a thousand dollars. Come on, let's stand. Relax, baby. Oh, don't you like me? You might not be bad when you're sober. All you need now is an orange in your hair and to be a walking old fashioned. Well, could Keo like me? Why don't could Keo get back? He'll dance tango with you. Who is could Keo? I heard of El Cotillo, the bullfighter. He's the greatest master in the world. Anyone in that room over there? Oh, just Brandon. Handsome Brandon. Delicious Brandon. <laughs> He's crazy about me, too. Excuse me. Oh, you, you, no, you mustn't go in there. Why not? Oh, of course, Brandon's got a terrible hangover. He's sleeping at off. That's why Katia went out. He's going to get something at the drugstore for Brandon's hangover. Maybe Brandon can fight with an explanation. Brandon will be awful mad if you wake him up. Oh, wow, music, Mr. Runyon. Come on back and dance. Turn on that radio. Oh, what's cool? Turn it off, I said. Oh, what's the big idea? So your friend Brandon's got a hangover, has he? Sure, all he needs is prairie oysters. He needs a little more than that, baby. He happens to also need an undertaker. One glance at Brandon's body had the same effect on April as an ice-cold needle shower. She sewed up fast and looked like the scared kid she was. I put in a call to Lieutenant McKenzie at headquarters and took stock while I waited. I've run across my share of murders, and I thought there was nothing new. But this killing was original. A curved sword had been plunged into the soft spot above the collarbone. One end of it was sticking out of his neck, and the other end through his side. It reminded me of something, and I tried to think of what it was. And then I remembered. They killed bulls that way, in the Plaza del Toro. You've been here. For uh, half an hour. And in all that time, you never discovered the body. We thought the apartment was empty. Just before you came in, Katia went into the bedroom, and when he came out, he said Brandon was in there, but he passed out, and he was going to get him something from the judge to him. How did you get into the apartment in the first place? Uh, I, I had a key. Brandon gave it to me. Now, let's get this straight. Which one is your heavy lover, Brandon or the Matador? Oh, I, I kind of like them both, I guess. You mean you play the field? Who are you calling? My sister. Catherine will help me. She'll get me out of this. Uh, a couple of lawyers might come in handy. Hello? Catherine. This is April. What's the matter? Where are you? At Brandon's apartment. It's awful. It's horrible. You've got to help me. You've got to get over here. Heaven's sake, April. Make sense. What's wrong? Yeah, let me speak to her. What's the last name? Langley. Langley. Uh, hello. Uh, who are you? What's happened over there? I suggest you get over here in a hurry. Your kid sister's in a spot. You know the address? Yes, I know where Brandon's apartment is, but what's going on? Murder, Miss Langley. Murder? I'll be over immediately. Oh, Brandon. 
Open up, open up. Mackenzie. Yes, open up. All right, where's the body, Runyon? Inside. All right, who's this? April Langley's the name. She was here when I found him. Come on, Brody. Yes, sir. What are they going to do? They're probably going to pin a murder charge on you. Oh, no! Unless you've got a little more to offer in your own defense. But I swear I had nothing to do with it. They can't arrest me. You'd be surprised, baby. Nice job. What do you think he was, lady? A pin cushion? I didn't tell him! No, but who did? Maybe he committed Harry Carey, Lieutenant. Don't be funny, Runyon. Keep your blood pressure down, Mackenzie. A lot more to this case than meets the eye. And by the way, Max, did you see a guy downstairs in a black sedan? Black sedan? Yeah. No, the street was empty. Yeah. Not that I expected it to wait. Well, come on, girlie, let's get started. <laughs> Don't let them save me, Mr. Runyon. Don't let them save me. Mackenzie may be small, April, but he's very determined. <laughs> I'll wait here for your sister. I tell you, I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. I'm innocent. That's what they all say, sister. But we'll go over your story down at headquarters. No. Now, come on. Come on. No, I don't want no trouble. Brody. Yes, sir. Photograph that body and the roll, and then call them more. Okay, Lieutenant. You won't need me, Mackenzie. I told you all I know about this over the phone. Well, why waste your time staying here then, Lunyon? Her sister can come down to headquarters if she wants to. I'm not wasting my time, Mackenzie. I'm working on a jigsaw puzzle. What? And the only piece that's missing is half a thousand dollar bill. I'm Catherine Langley. My name is Ronya. Come in, please. Huh? Where is April? The police took her down to headquarters. Why didn't you tell me to go there first? Now, just a minute, Miss Langley. You might get more out of me than you get from the police. What has she done this time? You sound like it's an old story. April's been getting herself into trouble ever since she was ten. I was wrong. I figured she started it too. But what was it you told me before about murder? A man named Brandon Russell was killed in this apartment just a little while ago. He probably had it coming to him. You don't seem very unhappy about it. All I want to know is what April had to do with this. She's playing the lead, Miss Langley. She's charged with the killing. Oh, that's ridiculous. Not when you know the circumstances. How did Brandon and April stand with each other? He was in love with him. That's why I say the charge is ridiculous. And what about El Cotillo? Is he mixed up in this, too? Do you know him? He followed April here from Mexico City. I I suppose she led him on, Miss but... Miss Langley, I don't mind telling you that your sister's in a bad spot. There's only one person I can think of offhand who might be able to help her out of it. This El Cotillo character. Was he here when it happened? Maybe. You know where I can find him. No. But I'll pay you well if you do. In half, Bill? What? Never mind. I'll see what I can do. Miss Langley, did you ever see a bullfight? No. I have. It seemed natural to put myself in the Matador's place. Feel the strain and the tension he was under. But Brandon Russell seems to be the only man who ever found out how it felt to be the bull. <laughs> How did you get away from you? We sent her into a private room with a mate in the search for weapons. 
She calls the matron on the head with a water pitcher and sneaks out through a back window. You kid. I don't know if you're working for her or any, but you better not hold out on me if she comes to you. Don't worry about it. If she shows up, I'll ship her back. You got any idea where she went? You might try the gin mills. Maybe she was thirsty. I'll call you later. Well, hello. You are a man? That's right. I am Lolita. Glad to know you, Lolita. Why should you be glad? There is nothing to be glad about. I am Lolita, and I am very, very mad. Who are you mad at? El Patrillo. You know him? Know him? Oh, know him? I practically bring him up. When he meets me, he's only a picador, and a very bad picador, too. Then he gets his inspiration from me, and he becomes a big shot, a matador. And you think he is grateful? Caramba, what a pig with women. Uh, no, no, take it easy, Lolita. I'm not as interested in his past as I am as in his present. You want to know where he is, no? You can say that again, sweetheart. What? Give us. Where is this Casillo? He tell me they are looking for him, and he asked me to hide him. You think maybe I stand for his cheek, and then I help it. Where is he, Lolita? In my apartment. I give you the address. Do what you like with him. It is no matter to me. Oh, senor, I would like you to cut his ear off. Maybe I will. What's the address? Mr. Fatman, before you go, I give you a warning. Do you speak Spanish? No, I never got around to it. Then you don't know what his name means in English. El Cochillo. No. Suppose you translate. El Cochillo, Mr. Fatman, means the knife. Lolita's apartment was uptown, so I decided to use my car. I drove up Madison to 55th and turned left. I hit a red light at 5th, and as I waited for it to change, I happened to glance into the mirror above my head. There was a car behind me that looked vaguely familiar. I drove up 5th to 63rd, and the light stopped me again. The car was still behind me. Just to see what would happen, I made a U-turn on the avenue and doubled back on that. Another U-turn, two blocks up, and I was going north again. This time, there was no question about it. I was being followed. I upped my speed and zigzagged through some heavy traffic. Then I headed uptown, making sure to take advantage of every light. By the time I reached the leaders, I'd lost him, I hope. Open up, Cachillo! Either you open up, my friend, or I'll get the cop on the beat to bust this door down. That's better. Oh, good evening, El Cotillo. Mm-hmm. Si, senor. My name is Runyon. Yes, I know. The fat man. Come in, senor. Oh, Lolita told you I was here, no? She sneaked. Yes? Yes. Lolita is so impetuous. Very fiery, too. You ever heard of a guy named Brandon Russell Cotillo? Brandon? Ay, pobre Brandon. Brandon makes the best martini in New York. It is too bad that his mixing days are over, no? I'm glad you're being frank. That saves me a lot of time. Oh, no, no, no. It is impossible. What is? For you to be a batador. You are too wide when you should be narrow. A picador, maybe. Yes, and a horse. But never, never a matador. Look, Cuchillo. Okay? How is my love, my life, my Lolita? Your love, your life was talking about cutting your ears off when I saw her last. <laughs> She's charming, no? All right, Cuchillo, cut out the small talk. What do you know about Brandon Russell's death? Nothing, senor. Look, Matador, you'll either talk to me or you'll talk to the cops. And I haven't got time for a quiz game. I told you, senor, I know nothing. Then we come inside the house and he is there with my sword sticking out. As far as I am concerned, this is very bad, of course. So I, uh, how you say it? Get out of there, muy pronto. Who did the sticking, Cuchillo? This I cannot tell. This sword I give him when we first meet. A talk and a friendship, no? And in exchange, I take the lovely April. You know where the lovely April is right now? Home, no? No. You dropped your handkerchief. Oh, I guess. I'll get it. Yeah. Lipstick, Cachillo. Why, no, it can't be. No. Now, don't tell me you got this on your handkerchief after kissing a bull. Senor, if you please. Save it and call her out. Are you going to do it, or will I? <sighs> you are very impetuous, too, Mr. Runyon. Querida. 
That means sweetheart in Spanish. Doc, come here, my love. Don't. Don't let him send me back. Please don't let him. All I've got to say, baby, is that you certainly fixed it for yourself. I wasn't going to let them put me in that awful jail. Get the court, April. You took it, Gio. No, no, I won't go with you. No. Madre mia, what a girl. What do you think of that mantle? Dare to come near me, I'll kill myself. That is a punta. A knife we used to finish off the bull. Oh, that is very sharp. Put it down, baby. No. I said put it down. Someone near the door. I have a feeling I know who it is. Open it gently, could you? You are. And that. You. You. Gotta get no. He's dead, could you? Extremely. Do you know him? I never see him before, senor. Well, I have. He's the guy who runs around tearing up thousand dollar bills. See if he has any identification on him. <laughs> I'm going to pay you. David, sister, I'm too busy to fan you right now. Hey, bro, sit down over here on the couch. Don't you touch me, do you hear? Don't come near me. Hey, bro. Well, at least I know his name. His name is Welsh. Well, yeah, according to this license in his wallet, he seems to be somebody. Uh oh, you find something? Don't say I did. I'll answer that. Hello. Who is this? Who do you want to talk to? It's Miss Langley there. Is this Miss Catherine Langley calling? Why, yes. Brad Runyon speaking. Oh, I'm calling from home. A girl named Dolita just phoned and told me my sister might be at this number. I understand my sister has escaped from the police. Look, Miss Langley, I'm going to get everything straightened out. Your sister is here. May I talk to her, please? Of course. Just a second, Miss. April. <laughs> yeah. Listen, baby. You're all set to take the rap for Brandon Russell's murder unless you follow my orders. Are you going to do as I say this once? Or am I going to feed you to the land? I, I'll do anything at all, Mr. Runyon. All right. Take this phone and keep talking for five minutes, you understand? Five minutes by the clock. I don't care what you say or how you say it, only don't hang up. I may be big, but I can move around fast if I have to. And, brother, for the next five minutes, I move fast. There was a candy store and two drugstores within a block. I covered the candy store first, and then one of the drugs. But my luck was bad. Until I hit number three. Then I saw what I was looking for, come out the door, and head for a cab parked on the corner. I ran across the last 20 feet and managed to jump onto the running board. Hey, what's the big idea? Keep driving, brother. I'm giving the orders. Oh, you were calling from home, Miss Langley. I preferred not to tell you I was in the neighborhood. Oh, there you did. Particularly since you just finished sticking a knife in a man named Welsh. Are you crazy? What was he, your chauffeur? You must have been in the back of that sedan when he followed me to Lolita's apartment. I never heard of a man named Welsh, and I have no chauffeur. No. Then what was he doing with this check made out for a grand and signed by you? Give me that. Not so fast. There seems to be a little more to the story. You set up a nice little party, but the curfew rang too soon. It was certainly sisterly of you to stick a sword in rough one and frame the rap on your sister. You've got all the answers, haven't you? I made it my business to get the answers. I don't like being pulled in as a witness or framing as low as that one was. You don't mind if I take a look through your bag, do you? Stop it, you... Uh, Keep driving. I'll show you my bag later. Take it easy, sister. I'm sure I'll find what I'm looking for in here. I'll take it easy. Uh, let's see if the piece of the thousand-dollar bill I found in your bag matches the one I've been hanging on to. Well, perfect, isn't it? Well, I guess that's that. Why did you kill it? I'm only sorry it wasn't April. All her life, she's had every man she ever looked at. Then she had to take Brandon away from me. And what about Welsh? Did you find you couldn't trust him after all? I gave him that check, and I offered him more. But he wanted even more than that. A fool thought he could blackmail me into marrying him. So you paid him off at Lolita's door, then called him across the street to establish an alibi. We followed you because we thought you'd lead us to April. So we could turn her back to the police. What a loving sister you are. Driver. Yeah? Police headquarters. Oh, and incidentally, Miss Langley, you don't mind if I keep both halves of this thousand dollar bill, do you? You've got to admit I've earned it. 
Well, I gotta hand it to you, Runyon. You did a good job. Then why growl at me like that, Mackenzie? I missed my dinner following up this case, and I'm hungry. I always growl when I'm hungry. I am hungry too, senor. Hey, are you still here, Cachello? I said you could go. I was waiting for the senor fat man. I thought perhaps he would like to join me. Join you in what? Well, you know, senor, a matador never eats before a fight. It is safer, you see, in case he is unfortunately gored by the bull. The surgery is easier for the surgeon. That's a pleasant thought. But after the fight, senor, I, madre mia, we eat like the horse. And right now I feel the way I feel after the fight. Have you ever tasted arroz con pollo? What is it? Tender chicken, cooked as only a Latin can cook it, covered over with steamy rice and the sauce you like to bathe in. Ah, not bad. Of course, you may prefer moye, mole de guajolote. This is dirty, covered over with a sauce a man could make love to. In it, you have chili, tomates, sesame seeds, and after, chocolate. You're beginning to sell me, Cotillo. Hey, uh, am I included in this, uh, invitation? <laughs> if you please, senor. Come on, Mackenzie. We can tickle our palace with a sauce or two, and then we'll move on to bigger things. We've got a man here who knows his bull. With Cotillo's training, he'll probably lead us to the classiest steak in town. Well, that's that. It seems I spend my life in getting into trouble and getting out of it. But at the same time, I generally manage to get some other people in and out of trouble, too. Be seeing you again. Welcome back. I have to admit, I was a little confused by him saying that she was, uh, she was a, uh, orange shot slash shy of being an old fashioned. Uh, an old fashioned cocktail, I looked it up online. It's like you mix sugar with bitters and waters, and then you add whiskey or maybe brandy. I saw some uh, site that said you added bourbon, and then you uh, garnish with the orange slice uh, and a cocktail cherry. So, okay, so she's got everything in there but the orange slice, uh, you know. Am I overthinking this, or was he just saying she was drunk in an overly elaborate way, and I, I am overthinking this? Probably am. I can't imagine that Brad is going to get the $1,000 bill, at least not anytime soon. Since it seems like that would be evidence. The whole idea of cutting an amount of money, whether it's a $500 bill or a $1,000 bill, or even a hundred since, you know, inflation had not yet, you know, devalued currency so much, it, it, it's a staple of a lot of radio programs. You know, you give them half the bill and they get the other half on completion. It's a wonderful uh, idea, but it's been ruined, I think, by the value of modern currency. You know, you don't have $500 bills or $1,000 bills in circulation. You know, the highest denomination you've got in common circulation is the $100 bill. I mean, that's not enough to induce an investigator into a case. I mean, for $100, if they're really able-bodied, they might help you move a sofa. That's about it. They're not going to be induced into any risky situation. I mean, the only way you could do that in a modern situation is if you did a lot of bills, like you took 11 or 12 $100 bills and you cut them all in half and you gave the investigator half of the bills. But, you know, I, I you know, if I were an investigator and you gave me like 
12 halves of $100 bills, where if I undertake this uh, job, I'm promised the rest of them, but I've got to sit around and patch all of these things back together, I'm probably just going to tell you to take a hike. Plus, they would probably have to be older $100 bills. I think that newer ones might present some challenges. But yeah, there were days where it was plausible that you could hire someone to risk their life and or reputation and or freedom in exchange for half of a piece of currency. Those were the days, I guess. Well, now I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to MJ, Patreon supporter since April 2018, currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, MJ. Well, that will do it for today. If you are listening on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell to be notified whenever a new episode is added. But join us back here tomorrow for The Man Called X, and we'll be back next Tuesday, another episode of The Fat Man. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives, and check out the Discord chat over at greatdetectives.net slash chat. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.